Welcome back, my friends, to another episode of City Skylines. Do you know where in the city we are right now? Because the view from here is really quite interesting. But what's most interesting to me is this street here, which tanks my frames because there's just a ridiculous amount of people walking up and down here. The foot traffic in this city is just wild. It's actually going like all the way across this bridge. <laughs> Look at this. No wonder I've got no frames right now. This is absurd. Oh my goodness me. How many people are walking on the roundabout? Don't you know? I built these footpaths for you. And no one wants to use them. Instead, oh, they just cause all sorts of traffic issues. Over here is another really great example. We've got traffic backed up, but when we zoom in to find out what the problem is, well, it's people standing on the crosswalks. Everything has come to a standstill. You might think that the game is paused. I'm actually going to go ahead and speed up the game. And even now, it's trying to run faster. The Why? Why stand in the middle of the road? This is definitely my number one pet peeve, because this city has problems. <laughs> like this rocking truck down here. Oh my god, like we got multiple rocking trucks? Dang, what's going on there? Whenever I get to the source of the city's woes, it's stuff like this, foot traffic just causing a problem, and then the traffic just getting completely jammed. When we zoom out, you'll see that we have problems galore. The biggest one though is that trash is piling up all over the city. This could be related to traffic, but if we look up here, you can see we are not processing enough of the garbage. But we are certainly storing a heck of a lot of it. I've built, what, five of these upgrades on each of our incinerator plants here? Ah, and that's right, I built another incinerator plant, but for some reason I decided to turn this one off. So let's turn that on. Let's try and get on top of this garbage problem. Okay, I decided to double up, which means we've got a lot of trucks heading out of here. What's the betting, though, they get caught in all of that traffic? So I've tried to find out where the trucks are going, and our city is really falling apart at the beginning of this episode. Look, waiting for a hearse, crime scenes, oh dear. So I'm going to go around and take care of a few of these traffic issues. Hopefully that will let the garbage trucks and the police through and sort out all of these issues. But while I do that, I want to let you know that all of the other episodes you've watched in this series were actually recorded before the game was publicly released. I decided I just want to have some fun playing and recording, made a ton of episodes, and then I had a bunch of stuff come up. Like I went on a holiday, I came back from the holiday, I got sick, hadn't been able to record another episode until now. And that means that a couple of patches have released. So since I've updated the city and let it run for a little while, the dynamics of the city has completely changed, which is why we've just got these insane issues everywhere. You might remember that we had big problems with our postal issues. Well, that's been fixed because it turns out that it was getting piled up over here at our cargo, which was a bug because somewhere in this list it can actually store your post. Ah, there it is, local mail. So yeah, this all just came down to a bug, which probably means I've got way too many postal services in the city. So we have this post office, next door is the post sorting facility, which sorting speed is in the red. Over in the north services spot, we built two post offices to try and deal with this issue. And then there's another one on the northwest services. And because our mail service availability is not doing too good, I'm gonna build yet another one up in this space. And this is the area that I wanted to develop next, but first of all, we gotta get on top of these issues. And it really does feel like it's just you know, these pedestrian problems, and most of it is caused by this city, which I think was too high of a density for the sort of traffic connections that it has around it. So it's no surprise this is a hotspot for problems because it's where all of the traffic jams pop up. What's this? A flourishing metropolis? Things must be going good, right? And the issues with our gorgeous city have been fixed. That's what I would like to tell you, but that wouldn't be the truth. We've made some headway, but here's the thing. I've built two more incinerator plants and immediately they've filled up. And if we look at the trucks that are in use, it's zero out of 20. So let's go ahead and build a storage extension. That means that we can have more stored garbage 
and then we should see some trucks coming out aha that one's making its way look there's a bunch more over here yeah now the trucks are going out to pick up the garbage so the problem is we can't burn it fast enough okay it's not about the amount of trucks it's just that it fills up this thing and we don't get rid of it quick enough Oh, and you might have noticed that I've like zoned some of the areas here. I was doing some planning for the future and I don't want my industrial area down here just to be full of incinerator plants. Oh yeah, and we'll come back to this in just a second. So purchase some of the mainland over here. We're basically going to build an absolute chunk of incinerator plants over here. So we're going to need another bridge that goes alongside this one. And I think I found the perfect spot. And with some road upgrades, we're going to put a bridge over here. I think I'll do away with that diagonal road for now. Oh, and yeah, I have the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, should we build that over here? This might be a bit excessive. It's possible, but it took me some tinkering. You need 33 meters of elevation to make this possible. So I decided to have a little fun here and bring the edge of the road out to the water, change the terrain a tiny bit. And then I built six of these things. Also, there's a giant fire off in the distance. Um, I was about to say you wouldn't know it. If you zoom in, yeah, look, there's little bits of fire among the trees. Kind of looks like less of a deal than the icons are making it out to be. Although this, this right here is pretty nasty. Right, this is the game of endless distractions. And some of you would probably say that this is kind of silly. The thing is, it feels to me like the game is being kind of silly that these incinerator plants can't keep up. But we'll try and match its pace and see what we can do. So we've enabled all of them. Then I'm going to put an upgrade on each of these. And when you want to do that, you've got to select each individual building, which I find kind of odd because you could just, you know, click on each of them one by one. But nope, that ain't the way it works. So now these things are going to go and start incinerating. Although we have an issue here, I thought I connected up all of the pipes. Oh no, it's a sewage treatment and water availability issue. It really feels like just a minute ago I built an extra one of these and now we need another one. And then there's the poopy water issue, which also never seems to go away. In a different city of mine, I built these wastewater treatment plants and it feels like you can never stop your city from creating this stuff. Anyways, we'll now find out that literally seconds later, I mean, I haven't exactly left the game running or anything. This stuff is already filling up. It's just ridiculous. It can't burn it away fast enough. I ain't messing around, man. I've built another four of these. No joke. We are really going to try and incinerate all of the trash. And seconds after I built it, I've noticed that the stored garbage has piled up immediately. It's clear that the game is just simulating stuff and the simulation is not going well. Also, we've got a backed up sewer. <laughs> yeah, I, like there, there hasn't been big jump cuts here. Okay, uh, where's the water pumping station? Like, I need another one now. And now I got more sewage to drink. Right, and placing two of those barely did the job. So another one here, back over there, another pumping station. Okay, let's go and talk about the other thing that I did in the city to try and help with all of this, which was to reduce traffic by introducing some public transport. This cost me uh, six of our development points. I've actually got loads of these available, so I've unlocked the subway. And the only place on the island I really had for the subway station was over here. So you can see I've added these connections for the lines at the rail yard here, just because it looked kind of odd sitting like that. Only one of them actually goes down to the subway. If we take the underground view, you'll see that it splits off into two different lines here. And that's because I've created two of these subway lines and we don't have a lot of passengers. I've even turned the price down. The way I decided to set the first subway up was to put these stops in the middle of the blocks. So our buses run along the arteries between the areas. So this subway station goes to the middle of this half of the old city. Then it goes up to North Central Residential, then into North Central Residential. Oh yeah, that one's called North Central Residential 2. Okay, after it visits both of those, it goes to the North Central Offices and then to North Central Industry. And lastly, uh, Forest Industry over here. So despite the ticket price being $3, I'm now going to change it to free. And we'll put more vehicles on it as well. We have not had a lot of uptake. Our second line will get the same treatment we're going to put the ticket price down now let's talk about the stops so the first one is actually over here next to our harbor 
and then it goes up into the old city, the lower side, and then it goes all the way across to South Central Residential, then into South Central Commercial, and lastly, South Central Offices. So we have good connections between the residential, the commercial, industrial, and offices, yet people just aren't uptaking this transport. However, if we come back to where we started the video, you'll see that we solved the foot traffic problem over here on the left because people now head to the subway. There was a lot more traffic last time I checked on this, but now you can see it's all moving down to the subway. This is where I think the simulation aspect of the game is really starting to become <laughs> annoying, let's say, because we should surely have more people using the subway. And despite all these incineration plants that I'm building, we still got garbage everywhere. And now we're starting to lose money as well. Good thing I've got a lot of it piled up. All right, let's purchase a few more tiles over here and then we're going to build a landfill of all things. That's because this is the other way that we can deal with garbage in the city, is to simply put it into landfill instead of burning it. Okay, this thing has upgrades too. Okay, yeah. Can I put them on top of the building? I can put it in the landfill site. I'm just going to put all of these upgrades on it and see what it does. And just a few moments later, the stored garbage number is going up. It could be possible that the store garbage has built up so much inside of the city that it would actually take an insane amount of incinerators to get rid of it. I might just keep building some more. Let's see what happens first. Okay, big time skip. You can see I've got another landfill. They both filled up really quick. And we have actually reduced the garbage problem a little bit, more so in this area over here, where I added yet another incinerator plant and immediately... I added all of these storage extensions and it filled all the way up again. Also next door is the post sorting facility and another post office. And once again, we've barely been able to scratch the issues here. It's honestly feeling quite ridiculous. And I still believe that a lot of it is probably tied to traffic. But I was hoping by putting those subway stations in the middle of these blocks, we would sort of draw the pedestrian traffic inwards. And this isn't as bad as in the beginning of the episode, but it's still just enough to cause another traffic jam. Well, it feels really awkward to try and continue developing the city with so many problems over here. I'll mention something else that I did based on some comments that I've read. I've also assigned some operating districts to some of these incinerator plants. So what this will do is target the incinerator plant just for this neighborhood, for example, but that's barely made a difference either. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but every time you build an incinerator plant or two, you increase the amount of sewage the city creates. I want to say that this feels completely illogical, but I guess I could be wrong. So this area has been cleared of its incinerators, and now we've got this ridiculous thing hanging out on this side of the city. So we've got some underground cables to remove and some dead end icons here. I'm hoping I can kind of like easily get rid of. Oh, if I use the straight line tool like that, it connects them together. Still leaves me with a problem. Okay, let's forget about that for the time being. I need to find a, a new home for this post sorting facility. I think we could actually just relocate it over to here and it will probably fit in with its industrial surroundings. Okay, another post office. Let's just chuck that on the opposite side. And then these are some of our signature buildings that I was laying down as we unlock them. So we also have the oil refinery. I'm just going to go ahead and put that there. Then we've got this in Casey room. Probably totally butchered that. Now this area is called more offices for a reason. So we're going to put this somewhere here in the middle. And that's all of them. So the first thing we're going to do is get in here with our uh, high density and create some small blocks. I kind of want to complement the skyscrapers we got going on over here. And immediately our demand has saturated just after four of these. And I'm very hesitant to expand the city because of all of these issues. Now, this area was where I was going to build some high density, but it really comes down to how you connect the areas. These little connections here are actually quite bad for traffic. And we've almost got this area under control. <laughs> I had this flowing by changing some of the arrows on the roads, but it's just come back again. Oh, then they all started moving again. I think this here might be one of the issues. Perhaps we can like relocate it a little further down the road. A footpath from here to there might help. Okay, and then a walkway across the road to get people to stop from going directly across it like this. Not sure if that's actually going to help or not. 
and uh, once again we've been totally distracted. So what I've read over and over again is that you need high density roads for high density residential but I also think as I said you need really good traffic connections which we don't. So the way that I've laid out the roads here, whew, just able to squeeze that one in, we have a connection over here leading in, there and that's actually it at the moment. Let's also create a small connection that sort of leads on from this road and creates uh, a crossroad. We'll have a connection come across this spot. And then last of all, we should make better use of this road by putting a connection like this. And same thing again on the opposite side. Actually, I've got to say it, these four way crossroads can be pretty awkward. So maybe on this side, yeah, we'll create a connection like that and get rid of this one. So it's like I said, this is all for high density. Uh, let's get the fill tool down here. That one's going to be North American. This block is going to be European style. Let's just let it grow and see what happens. Okay, the first towers magically appear. Yeah, look at this. The cranes disappear. And there's a tower, just like real life, of course. We're also going to need some smaller buildings around the edges to help it kind of blend in a bit more. Although, to be fair, there's not much in the way of edges because I rather deliberately put this right next to these other roads. Okay, and at the back, I think we'll have some mixed with commercial stuff. And so with residents moving in, we've got more office skyscrapers appearing over here. Let's zone out a few more spots. And I should have thought about this first, but with a new area comes the need for education. And possibly we could squeeze it on this road. Now, I think we're going to have to settle for this spot on this side. I think now is a good time to mention that some of the unlocks here have citywide effects. Let's go and grab the city hall and the central bank. One of these addresses an issue I found in the industrial area. It's mostly seemed to have gone away, but that's it. High resource costs. So now in the administration tab, we have the city hall and the central bank. This one lowers import costs and increase exports. So this is one of the things with this game. As you progress and you unlock more and more stuff, it increases the efficiency of your city. So we need to relocate uh, these buildings. I'm actually just going to put this inside of this block. And that gives us the ability to build this in this space, which I think suits rather well. I'm not sure what I was thinking with this connection, though. That looks super janky. Let's just uh, modify that. And the other thing was the city hall, which does something similar. It, it reduces the import cost. So now we've got a couple of those big municipal buildings in this area. Maybe we can build some more and develop this area to look a little more interesting. The leisure part, I think that's going to have to be moved down to this space. Now we, of course, unlock some tourist attractions like the water park. We'll put that in a better spot later on. But I've also got this landmarks tab where you have stuff like a Ferris wheel. Okay. A National Gallery of Art. This thing's rather large. So to develop the leisure area, we're going to squeeze those things in. While it is no surprise to see that we have uh, traffic issues, although we do only have a couple of connections. The traffic's backed up all the way around the corner. This is not the way to plan for high density, really, is it? Oh, and immediately we've got just crime scenes everywhere. So, leaping ahead in time once again, I'm starting to feel the pinch of this game as we got problems in our new area. I kind of just want to look at the city without all of these bubbles anywhere. And it's really nice over here because there's not many of them in this new area, which is north-south residential. So, I've extended this strip down here with a nice road and then lots of little smaller ones and tons of housing. There's the occasional commercial shop and a couple of facilities down here. The whole thing looks really cool. I love the way that it's filled out this area. This bit though was a little tricky to figure out. I moved over the city hall and then I put some of these uh, slightly bigger buildings around the edges here and it worked out pretty decent. There's a path across here and uh, well what's this? Livestock, yes. So earlier in the series, we did some experiments over here on fertile land, which was actually not what we needed for livestock, but you do need it for grain. So when we look at specialized industry, livestock farming and stone mining are ones that you can actually do anywhere. And so I didn't need to build these there. So thanks for pointing that out. So I, I'm just going to put this in here to fill in the space. Honestly, it doesn't really look like it fits, but it's nice to just break up the grass which is something that this game is lacking. Anyway, I want to turn our attention to the industrial area now. I was hoping that creating these houses would create some industrial demand, but as you can see, we got absolutely none. Northwest Residential. 
No wait, just just west residential. I, I noticed that I called this one over here North South. Not sure if I said that in the video because I gave it its correct name. We should have actually been Northwest. And I've decided to extend some of the housing into this area because I'm just trying to jostle some more industrial demand at the moment. So we'll have a few plots in this space. So yeah, with some new residents moving in, I've seen the industrial demand pop up and then go back down again. So we should have a few more things developing. Oh my god, big lag spike. I guess we can now call this West Industrial. And I struggled to fill this out with some interesting buildings other than just putting stuff alongside the roads. So I went and built four of these wastewater treatment facilities. And based on this chart over here, I think that means we need less sewage outlets now. And as you can see, this has become a problem for the nearby residents and a problem for us in the future. Because once the water comes around here, this is where we're getting our clean drinking water from. Okay, all but two have been turned off and we're still in the green. Do I dare turn all of them off? It looks like the four of these are going to meet the demand for the whole city. That's kind of fascinating. I also uh, built an industrial waste processing site over here. Just looking for something to fill in the space, aesthetically speaking. Which is why I built this raised wall around it, which is a road. Ah, uh, looks like that bit got away with it. Oh well. So that's the industrial bit taken care of. Now we kind of want to look at leisure. And this is kind of it, my friends, the finishing touch on the city. I love how built up this middle bit here is, and then it flattens out. And then we get a big lag spike. That was actually a game crash, and luckily for me, I just stepped away from the computer for a little bit, as I wanted to let some of the demand fill in. So we're exactly where we were a moment ago. That's terrific. The demand that we don't have is the offices just to fill in this space here. So... Use your imagination, because this is kind of it. And really, we need to pop into this view to enjoy it all. I was able to squeeze in this art gallery here, which actually looks like the one in New York City. I think it's probably modeled on that. And yeah, we've got a whole row of entertainments and gardens, and then a big shopping area just in the corner here, perfectly aligned with the Ferris wheel. A big car park in this spot over here, some more shops. And it just turned out looking so good. It'll probably look even better when these trees grow up as well. That's one of the things about this game I was a little disappointed with. You can't actually place fully grown trees like these two. If you could, you could really have some better control over the aesthetics. Oh, and there is something that I failed to mention at the very beginning of this episode, which I was supposed to mention then. We're running this in developer mode. Now, I don't know if maybe this has something to do with why our city is performing so badly, but it was performing this bad before I enabled the developer mode. Anyway, this has something in it. Uh, climate, yep, that's the one. This lets you set the time of year, how many clouds are in the sky, and I've just realized for some reason these have reset. Maybe that happened after I crashed. If you notice that the coloring of the city was different after I crashed, that would be it. I changed it to look like this because, you know, I want to look at a pretty city, and recording videos when it's raining is just kind of glum and gloomy. But yeah, if you're getting a sense of finality right now, you are absolutely clocking on to where I am going with this. We have developed this island and it looks really cool. We had a lot of fun experimenting with stuff. But as you know, the city now is kind of garbage, like literally piled up with garbage that I can't get rid of. And as much as I adore this game, I have a bit of a problem when playing with it, which is a lack of focus, which I should take responsibility for. You know, it's up to me to take notes of what I'm trying to do and stay focused on it, but I constantly get pulled between the management aspect and the aesthetic aspect. And so it's really hard for me to play this game and try and make things look pretty and interesting while the city is falling apart and poop water is building up. I just feel like I've become quite unproductive and spend ages tinkering and tweaking with things. But I've had a blast and I'm going to continue having a blast. I've been doing speedrun city where I just build, build, build. Those videos, if you want to watch them, are over on my second channel. They are live streams, so they are hours long. And then I think at some point in the future, I'm going to focus my attention on aesthetics. So I was about to say that there might be an episode 8 in this series, but I know that there won't be because of the line that I said before. I want to create an aesthetic city. So at some point when I do that on live stream, if I knuckle down and really create a good aesthetic city and get a feel for what it's like when you just focus on that, that might be like my entry back into the game 
for creating content with it, like these episodes. And of course, at some point in the future, we're going to have access to mods as well, which could really let us play the game the way that I want to do it. So for now, I think it's going to be a wrap on this series. Maybe the occasional video to show you what I've been doing in some of my live streams. But at some point in the future, I might come back. And if I do, we're probably going to be focusing on like an aesthetic city. But that's going to be it for me in this series. I hope you've enjoyed it. So thanks for sticking with me. And uh, hopefully you'll be around if we do that again. So yeah, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon with another video. Probably just a Minecraft video. Bye-bye.